Hey guys, uh, welcome again to another ANSYS tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over um, a bit of a more advanced topic. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, nonlinear uh, stress strain curve implementation into static structural in ANSYS Workbench. More specifically, I'm going to be going into the uh, cast iron model and showing you how to insert custom uh, compression and, and, and tension data uh, to your material in order to to get that uh, to work in uh, Workbench. So uh, start up a, a new uh, Workbench interface and uh, drag in a static structural analysis and give it a title. And for the geometry I already created one here to save a little bit of time so I'm actually just going to uh, share that geometry and we're going to go into engineering data and actually it doesn't really matter what you have here because we're going to actually be overriding the, uh, the, the el elasticity model uh, for the material and as well as the press on ratio but the, the density and maybe the, uh, the, the tensile yield and compressive ultimate should be changed but uh, we're not going to do that for now I'll show you a bit later um, how it works so once you have the uh, geometry imported uh, or created, uh, go ahead and uh, start up your uh, mechanical. So wait for that to load. It's going to attach the geometry, and there we go. So that's like it's really a simple model. I, I I made something really quick. I mean, this could be applied to to anything, but it's just for uh, illustration purposes. So. The, uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is um, go in, head into the geometry tab and for every solid body, I mean if you have multiple bodies you'd have to do this for each one but uh, you'd go ahead here in, into your solid and you would insert and hit commands and, uh, and actually make sure when you insert the commands that you're uh, in the correct units. So for this uh, tutorial I'm actually going to be doing it in uh, US customary, so inches, pound, Fahrenheit. So make sure you have that selected. And when you insert a command object it actually says warning that uh, the units for this uh, command object is in customary. But there's actually a way in case let's say you you made a mistake and you know you you actually didn't put uh, the the right units or you so you don't have the right unit settings here you can always actually go in into um, into sorry the uh, advanced geometry where is it analysis and if you can go into data management and the solver units you can actually put that you can see that currently it's to set to bin so you can actually put manual and put bin so that way in case you forget to change the units the solver will automatically uh, use the inches pound uh, meter units in, in case you forgot in, in case you left it in metric or something so here we're going to open the commands and here's where actually you enter the custom uh, uh, table data so I have an example here. This is an example of a cast iron curve. It's uh, this is a class 30 actually, uh, 35. So 35 uh, ksi in tension, and compression has 75. So this is just actually to show you. But uh, my example is actually a class uh, 25 that I'm using. So basically, if you have like a sample uh, or if you have your own stress strain uh, data, um, you could just take a few points in Excel which is what I did here and plot them plot them out so for this is inches per inches and this is in a PSI so those are the units and you can plot out your tension data and your compression uh, sorry compression curve and tension curve um, so once you've done that uh, you want to actually make sure that the first two uh, points actual points because the zero you're not going to enter them in the table but you want to make sure that your actual first two points, which is the linear region over here, uh, are similar, or else ANSYS uh, won't really compute them. Pro uh, won't be able to compute the uh, the the solution. So as you can see here, I have a uh, the both both slopes are exactly the same for the uh, for the elastic region. So we're okay. 
Um, next, uh, I'm gonna basically, I already have the snippet of code. This actually, you can get it uh, from the ANSYS uh, manual, or I can post it below uh, if you guys need to. Just actually just leave a comment if you guys need this. Um, so I'm gonna basically copy this and paste it. And I'm just gonna go over quickly about what it does. It's basically a command object. Um, you're inserting uh, preprocessor information. Uh, EX is the so it's the Young's modulus in PSI. So that's the the one that we calculated here, 130. And uh, so that's going to be for the for the linear region. Um, NUXY is the Poisson ratio. So we're going to have it at 0 0.3. Here we defined that we're going to be using the cast uh, iron model, which lets you have two tables for tension and compression. Uh, here, 0 0.04, that's actually the plastic Poisson's ratio. So when you're in the plastic region, it uses 0 0.04 as a Poisson ratio instead of 0 0.3 in the linear region. This is important. Uh, 0 0.04 is it's not an exact value. Uh, you, you have to determine it based on experimental uh, data. Um, so here we have the uh, tension data, so all you really need to know is that we're uniaxial tension and 5 is basically the number of uh, data, uh, data points that we're entering. So we have 5 for tension and 5 for compression. Uh, the point zero zero 0.001 here is uh, once again the first data point uh, that you need to enter for uh, the strain and this is comma the stress. So strain, stress, strain, stress and you can leave all the rest uh, the same as I have here. So as you can see in our example, we basically have the same data, 0 0.001 and 1300. So that's how we set up the, uh, the command object. So once we have that set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and generate a mesh. And I'm actually going to uh, refine the corners just to get a bit better detail. So there we go. And actually, I'm going to change it, uh, the advanced size function to put on curvature, on proximity and curvature. So I get like better detail in, in this region. Uh, okay, so then once we have that, I'm going to insert a uh, fixed support. And I'm going to insert a force. And I'm going to put that force in components and I'm going to put a value minus 2,000 pounds per foot. And then we're going to check out the um, maximum principal stress because because cast iron, we don't uh, look at the von Mises, we look at the maximum principal. We're going to look at uh, the strain equivalent total. And we're going to check out more Coulomb. And actually, the more Coulomb uh, stress safety factor is, uh, is, the, is the safety factor used for, uh, for cast iron. So actually, uh, here's an, a little uh, uh, image that shows you the, the more Coulomb method and the modified more Coulomb. So in this case, we're not, we don't really cast iron actually follows the modified more Coulomb uh, theory. But um, because uh, ANSYS has just the more Coulomb theory, we're, we're just going to stick with that for now, which approximates the stress theory uh, fairly well for the safety factor. So this is uh, both in both sigmas in tension, both in compression, and uh, in the other two quadrants. So that's, that's what we're applying here. So actually, what we're going to do is, for the more Coulomb theory, you need to answer the maximum tensile limit and compressive limit. So those are going to be the two limits that we actually need to enter. So if you would have done this uh, for the material, in the, if you set it in the material data, then it would have taken that. But here we're actually just going to put a custom value. So the tensile limit, we're going to put uh, 25 KSI. And the compressive limit, we're going to put 50, 000, uh, sorry, 50 KSI. That's for the stress. So we're just going to go ahead and hit solve and uh, get some results.
Oh, and there's actually the in the analysis settings. Um, it's always a good idea for uh, nonlinear uh, analysis to enable large deflections. I actually forgot to do that, and that's maybe why I actually didn't converge. So, sorry, go into analysis settings, large deflections on, and we're actually going to change the auto time stepping to sub steps. We're going to put initial 8 and maximum, say, 25. go ahead and solution information and you can actually check out the force convergence plot so 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 far I calculated uh, 0.25 seconds Point four. So as you can see, because with, with non-linear, you, you really need to actually uh, take off automatic time-stepping controls and put um, manual sub-steps. Or else sometimes uh, you, you don't get convergence. So here, still, still going. 0.9, it's almost done. And... And that's almost there. So there we go, one second. That's the last sub-step. And I think it converged. Maybe not yet. Okay, there we go. Done. Okay, so um, so there we have it. So there's the maximum principal stress. So as you can see, we we hit the limit. Like we we reached our our 25, which was what we set for uh, total deformation of 0.8 percent. So we hit 25. We can go ahead and probe. We can see it's almost near. So I think we we were over. So the force that I applied actually. <coughs> you can almost see that it maybe even surpassed uh, 25 so this this here would would, would crack right away um, so that's for the maximum principal stress results the total equivalent strain actually needs to be corrected for uh, the cast iron model um, because of the uh, plastic Poisson ratio uh, the total strain calculated by ANSYS uses uh, 0.3 and um, for cast iron you actually need to insert a custom uh, user-defined result for that so I'm just gonna go ahead here and uh, this is actually the calculation for the total strain except for the only difference is instead of 0.3 here I'm using 0.04 so we're gonna go ahead and evaluate that so there we have it. it's 0.027 inches per inches so that's well above our uh, our limit of 0.08 and that's because we we completely surpassed the uh, the uh, deformation uh, of the material at this region. However, the limit. However, ANSYS just keeps uh, the same stress because it, it just it just plateaus basically at 25. So it doesn't it doesn't continue higher it, uh, as you increase the deformation. It just stays at uh, at that at that stress value. So that's why it's important to actually check out the uh, the deformation results versus the stress results if you're at the limit. So the last thing was the safety factor. So here uh, we're applying the Mora Coulomb method uh, uh, safety factor. So as you can see here, the red is uh, below one. So basically, it uh, the material should uh, would break at, at this at this load. So everything that's in orange seems to be between uh, one and five. So not a so I guess within acceptable region. So as you can see here, <coughs> it's uh, it's below one and here it's below one in uh, in compression actually so minus 62 so we we actually passed the limit uh, in compression so that would fail there as well so I think that's about it I'm not sure if I uh, left anything out but uh, let's just see let's just go over that one more time principal stress equivalent and um, 
I think that's about it. So if you guys have uh, any questions or comments, uh, please uh, leave them uh, in the section below. And uh, if you like the video, please subscribe. And if you need more information, just again, uh, leave me some comments and I'll be, I'll be happy to explain. Thanks.